Dustin. Dustin, another fight week, but this time no salon quality hair. What happened? Why the buzz cut? Buzzed it off, man. I don't know. It's time to change it up. Time to change it up. This, uh, this fight's an interesting one for you, right? Because you've been fighting the top, top guys for a while, and now this is a guy lowering the rankings, this young prospect coming up. And you've always said, oh, I need a guy to make me sort of fearful to get me back in that cage. Did you see this guy as someone who can do that? Or was it, hey, the name came across the desk, I felt like fighting, here we are? No, it was, it was because he's finished his last five opponents. You know, he's a very dangerous guy, young, gritty, just a tough, tough guy. And uh, he's earned his, his shot to crack in, into the top of the division. I, I respect what we do, and that's just how it goes. Yeah. When you look at things to, I don't need, know if you need any motivation necessarily, but do you look at it as like, oh, he's a guy who called for me. He wanted to test himself against someone like me, and it's up to me to let him know that you're nearly there, but not quite yet. I'm still at the top. Yeah, it's a challenge to myself as well. That's how I went about training camp, and part of the reason I took this fight it's like, let me see, you know, let me, let me show and see to myself that I, I still got it to, to fight these, these warriors who bring it every time, have that never say die, never quit attitude. You know, I, that's what I, those kind of fights are what I want to be a part of. I feel like this sort of happens to a bunch of guys every so often where they sort of say, oh, you know, I look, the, the end is closer than the beginning is. And then suddenly everyone's saying, well, they, they're about to retire. They're about to retire. Do you feel like already this week people are sort of looking at you like, well, if he loses this one, he might just disappear? Yeah, big time. I've been seeing people say that a lot. And I think that's because like a week ago I did an interview and somebody asked me, are you, is this your last fight if it, if it doesn't go your way? And I said, well, any fight can be my last one, win or lose. You know, I've been doing this a long time. And I think that's where they, they ran off with that. But we just got to fight man we just got to fight Saturday yeah uh the shocking one for me I think you're plus money for this fight which has been a while since I've seen you as the underdog especially against a guy lower ranked does that surprise you do you feel like oh classic what have I done for this sport lately they're looking at the last fight and just making judgments of that or do you think maybe people are starting to see you as potentially on the way out I think it could be it could be both um I lost my last one he's on a finish streak he's young you know I'm 35 he's I think he's 28 Maybe that's why. I, I don't know. You know. I don't make the odds or look into him that much. Okay. We know what, the, uh, what a win does for him, you know, what it does to get a win over you. What, what does a win do for you on Saturday? Where does this put you in the division if you knock down this younger guy? Where does it put you in the title shot picture and, and everything like that? The, I think it, a lot of that depends how I win. If it's a big finish or something like that, you know, I, I believe I'm a win away from a title shot with, with a great performance. But it writes the ship. It gets me back in the win column. And we take it from there. You know, I try not to look too far past these these fights because Saturday ha isn't here yet. We got to go out there and do the damn thing. And then Sunday, that's when we reassess and see really where we're at and what's next. Dustin, we're here. Uh, I can't remember if it was the countdown or an embedded or whatever, but I, you said something along the lines of, you know, I remember when I wanted my shot and someone gave me a shot and now he's looking for his shot. So I'm curious, what fight did you go through that, you know, like you felt like, you know, this guy is giving me my shot and then you got past it and that catapulted you? I think if I had to pinpoint one moment, it might have been when I fought um, Eddie Alvarez in Dallas. You know, he was a former world champion. I had put a streak together. I don't remember exactly where I was, like record-wise, or my last fights before that, but that was my opportunity to fight a world champion, a guy who I grew up watching fight, you know, in Japan, on, in Dream, and... and Back when HD Nets were playing fights, you know, Eddie's a legend, man. And to stand across from him was like, you know, your idols become your rivals thing. It's like, wow, here we are. He gave me my shot. You know, this legend of the sport gave me my shot. And from that, I think it, it was just up, bigger fights, bigger names for me. So do you think that he'll go through something like that standing opposite of you? Because, you know, he is a, he's, you are a name that he wanted to fight specifically. Right. I don't know. That's, that's, I don't know what's going on between his ears, but we'll, we'll see. Everybody's different. And I'm curious, um, what do you make of this? Like, there's a lot of lightweight fights coming up, but it does seem like a lot of like you, RDA, Charles, like you're fighting this new generation of fighters. Like RDA is fighting your teammate Gamrod and Charles is fighting Armin. So what do you make of this like kind of old guard of lightweight kind of drawing the line in the sand against these up and coming guys? It's great to see, you know. It keeps the sport moving, and that's just the way this goes. That's the nature of what we do, you know, F father time. Um, just last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Sean and Cheeto? Yeah, that's an exciting fight, man. Uh, it, it's a, I know Sean is, is the favorite by the odds makers, but it's, it's a coin toss for me, you know, because Cheeto did beat him. I don't care what anybody says, you know, and I'm a fan of both guys. 
I'm, I'm excited to watch the fight. I actually do have one more. Um, you fought a lot of like international opponents. Like you fought uh, Habib, you fought Charles, and normally when you fight a guy like that's that popular from a country, like their fans can kind of you know they lash out at you not because they dislike you, but you're fighting their guy. Benoit seems incredibly popular in French. So I'm curious how the French fans uh, received you and treated you since you know this fight was announced. Oh man, since the fight was announced, it's like my my uh, my Twitter and. And Instagram is like full of French fans. Like, <laughs> and I understand. I understand. Those Root for your guy, man. Those stand over here. Just real quick. Uh, a few weeks ago, you kind of spooked us, uh, saying that this bout was off. But then, you know, it was shortly, I guess, uh, back on. Can you explain to us what what happened then? Just some miscommunication. I don't want to really get into it, but just some mis- miscommunication. We got we got it all figured out. Got it. And uh, you mentioned if you get a big win on Saturday, you're probably one more fight away from fighting for the belt. But uh, aside from the belt, is there any sort of side quests or any things that you like to cross off from your bucket list MMA before it's all said and done? Side missions? Yep. Uh, no, the Undisputed World Championship is like the last thing I really, really want to do in this sport. You know, I've, I've done, a, I feel like I've done a lot, you know, not being boastful or anything, but I've been fighting a long time. That's my 30th fight in the UFC. Um, you know, I've come up short of been victorious it's it's been a long journey I'm just I'm thankful dude I'm in like a a place where I'm content with everything I'm happy with who I am and the career I've had and being able to provide for my family the way I have and and just it's it's been beautiful man that's the fight fight journey and what's beautiful about it to me is I'm I've been fighting for 17 years and I've been surrounded by so many guys with the same dreams and even with the same work ethic and you know they get out of this sport broken and and broke you know, and, and beat up and just, I'm just thankful, man. Yeah, for sure. And as you mentioned, like this sport is, is tough. Uh, and in many ways, you know, you're a winner. You've stuck around for a long time, been at the highest level, made good money. Um, have you ever thought about of an exit plan, not trying to retire or anything? You're looking great. But um, have you ever thought about what your exit from MMA looks like? Man, since I started making real money and fighting, I've been, you know, slowly putting that together you know i have a i have so much stuff going on outside of the the, the octagon um businesses that i'm part of that i own you know just a, a lot i'm involved in a lot of things outside of fighting so that's already that's been there for me you know it's not like i'm fighting because i need this check i'm fighting because i i need to fight for me um so that's already there yeah and uh, just a couple more, um, about a year ago or so, we, we spoke and you told me that 170 was likely going to be a thing that you would try. Is that still in, in your mind, like 170 pounds at some point, even, even if it's like a one-off fight? I'm not sure, man. These guys are big at 170. You know, I'm in the, in the training room with them on a daily basis. And this training camp has been the lightest I've been in, in a bunch of fights, you know. So I don't, I don't think I'm big enough to, to fight those guys. I can make that... I would show up like ready weight, you know, 170. I would get in the cage at 172, 173. These guys would be, you know, how big welterweights get you know, 24 hours, man. Yeah. And lastly, um, at 145 pounds, Ilya Topuria knocked out Alexander Volkanovsky, and he's kind of teased about potentially going up to 155. You've had that trajectory of being, you know, a top dog at 145 and then moving to 155 and having that success. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on Ilya Topuria's finish and uh, what would you think of him at 155? Man, brutal. I mean, we all know that he had possessed those skills and he could do that, but to see it happen to Volkanovski that way was crazy, man, because Volk's a legend. Um, you know, when I made, not saying that Volk's done by any means, but when I made that switch, I was still young in my career, so I had a lot to grow on and kind of build into that frame and, and continue my skill set, you know, to see a guy go up and wait. I'm sure he'll have success, but it's just a different scenario, you know. Um, we'll see. That's right no, here. The fi- um, just to follow up. Just to follow up uh, on that, the uh, the tweet you made in the miscommunication, Gilbert Burdens came out and said Dustin got paid. Is there any financial angle to that communication, or was it something something else entirely? It was just misunderstanding, man. Fair enough. And yeah. the, the extra, we don't need to be watching pockets, you know? The the extra two rounds, is that something that you're a fan of? Is that something you I ask for it. Of? Yeah, I ask for it. I think the better fighter wins, you know, in the long run. Somebody gets caught early. That can happen to either guy. You know, dry, even submission or knockout early can happen. But usually, if somebody, if two men fight for 25 minutes, the better fighter wins. And I believe I'm the better fighter. 
Yeah. And last one very quickly. Uh, Gagey, Holloway, BMF title. Obviously, you've got experience with both. What's your pick? Fought them both twice, man. I, um, I know we can't bet, but just judging off the odds, if Max is the dog, you gotta put, you got to go with Max because he can, of course he can get it done. That's another coin toss to me, but I think Max's length, his rhythm and striking will give Gaethje some problems. And I, people think Max is small. Max isn't, isn't a small guy. Thank you. Dustin, over here. A lot of the outside noise about you before was, hey, Dustin doesn't fight those lower-ranked guys, and now here we are, about, you're about to do so. So is there anything else you want to prove on Saturday night, or is that just all outside noise that you kind of just mute out? That's all outside noise. I, uh, I fight everybody. I fight whoever. Just the last stretch of my career has been big fights, you know, big opportunities. What does it make sense to, like, go back down the line and whenever I have these huge opportunities in front of me? You know, obviously losing this fight, the division kind of being tied up the way it is, it makes sense. Like I said, I respect what we do. I honor this, man. That's just part of the process, fighting guys like this. And I've done it before. You know, I went from a title fight to fighting Dan Hooker five rounds, you know, who, who was on a streak, who had just made a minute in, in his home, you know. I've done it before. That's just the way the game goes. And how does this um, home fight week feel to you? I know you're not too far from here, and also you're sharing the car with Gamera, something you've been training with a lot. So how, how does that all feel going into Yeah, me and Gamera were like the main training partners this training camp. It just worked out because he's, he, you know, he does a lot of his work southpaw. <coughs> he's fighting a southpaw, so it was perfect timing, bro. We pushed each other and had some great, great sessions. Um, it's awesome. You know, this is the first time in a long time that I drive to the fight. You know, I, I drove an hour from Coconut Creek to Miami. It's great not hopping on, on planes and being in familiar territory, seeing my coaches, seeing Gam right here, Pedro Munoz, guys I see in the gym every day. It's, it's awesome. I feel good. And last one, um, really quick. I know you probably get asked about this a lot, but Connor's state right now, Connor McGregor, do you think we'll see him fight again given the situation he's around in, or is that just. Bro, who knows? Who knows? I'm a fan of the sport, so anytime that guy fights, you know I'm watching. Um, but your guess is as good as mine. Who knows if he ever comes back? Yeah, Dustin, just can you quickly go through the process of when you're about to go in a war? Because uh, Benoit said that like three hours before the fight, he's like he goes beast mode. Nobody, nothing exists except on the fight. What's your mental process when you know you're going to have a war in a few hours or minutes? Um, I don't have like a, a routine or anything that I, that I do. I just kind of chill out. My wife gets here tomorrow. Keep it familiar the way I've been doing it this whole time, you know. If the sun's out, I might go out by the water. Just relax. I take it easy. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's going down.